Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. I've got six guitars I want to talk about today. So one night, I was scrolling through Reverb, and I saw this double cut, and I was like, whoa, serious wood grain. But then when I clicked on it, that's not wood grain, that's rawhide. Well, at one point in time, it might have been anyways. <laughs> We've got a leather-bound body going on here. So that means at some point in time, somebody took this student grade model and paid an expensive price to basically make a custom jacket for this whole thing. I think Elvis did something like this for some of his guitars. It was a very in thing to do at one point in time, but this was not my area of expertise. So we're just going to appreciate it for what it is because they have all these like floral designs going on with this thing. And the fact that they use this really bright white stitching along the edges made me think it was like a bound instrument, like how we normally think of binding yet today, just the white lines around. It. This customized feature really works well with the double cut shape. And I like the fact that they still utilize the pick guards over top of this, even though they technically didn't even have to. It blends in really well with this worn finish now. It looks like they just put the pick guard straight over top of the leather. But then we get to the headstock, we can tell this thing was definitely played. And that's what's kind of fascinating about this model. Not only did they do the designs on the side around the entire body, nothing was spared, but they also did it on the back. Now, granted, they didn't do the designs on the back side. However, it makes you think. If you were to take this leather jacket off, what kind of condition would this thing be in? Because normally, reversing a modification would not be a bad thing on a guitar. However, this one, you almost don't want to do it because it's such an old job. It looks like the neck is in perfectly fine shape. Everything looks the way it should be. Nearly all the parts are still original on this. But this thing was priced, in my opinion, at a premium. Almost $12,000. So who's to say there's not some sort of a scary repair hiding under that. I'd be too worried to buy this thing over that because you would never get to know the true story unless you deface the history of this particular one. However, you might not have to even worry about that because the seller here, Olivia Vintage, says the leather has been adhered to the back of the body, meaning you can't just take this off necessarily because you'd likely be ripping up the original finish off the back anyway. But they do say that it appears loose around the top and edges of the body. So maybe the glue came undone or they never did it. You could have a minty 58 double cut junior in there, which might appeal to a collector. But at the same time, you're going to have the beat up headstock. So it would just look out of place. So needless to say, your best bet with this thing is just to leave it alone and appreciate it for the period piece that it is. Because if you just want a good condition double cut junior, wow, these things are just getting insane in price. But you could always get something more similar to this. So maybe he wasn't asking all that much of a premium for how cool that one was. But now let's jump forward a couple of years. That's right, something listed around the same time, but what I thought the initial one was. So instead of a junior this time, we're stepping down a notch to the Melody Maker series. These things are still relatively affordable. 2,500 bucks will get you your pick of the crop. Really nice ones. Sometimes you can find more beat up ones for a little more than a thousand. They're a nice bang for the buck. But this thing... Somebody has bound it, you know, in our traditional sense, and it appears they put a flamed maple veneer cap over it. How cool is that? So normally these things would look like this. You can check one out in this Melody Maker video that I made. Personally, I prefer the 65 style. That's kind of the weird freaky fish shape or the single cuts. However, the blockier double cuts definitely have an appeal to them as well. So it appears not only did they modify all this stuff, which is really cool, but we have a pigtail bridge back here. So it's intonatable all while still being a rap tail. They ditched the Melody Maker single coils for P90s. So that's going to beef up the sound a little bit. And it looks like they might have uh, modified our control layout here just a little bit at the same time. But my favorite thing about this one is the back. Nice job. That reminds me of like an old violin or something. It's not the typical wood grain you see on a guitar. So that makes me believe this was like a DIY project that a father maybe did with his son or just somebody who wanted to start practicing their woodworking. I mean, it's not the most professional job. You can tell that they definitely sanded down the horns a little bit too much. And yeah, some blockiness going on here. Maybe those aren't veneers. We'll have to get a side profile view because that heel's looking awfully chunky back here. But it's almost like a burl maple back. It's got an interesting vibe. And I like the fact that it's got some honest wear. It's like, yeah, here we go. They might have actually thickened this instrument up with like full slabs back here because you don't normally see that. Not quite that thick anyways. But then they also added wooden veneers around the side. That's not 
easy to do. It's either that or they just expose the regular mahogany. However, when they put the binding around here, yeah, I think this was a full on project here. I can really appreciate this piece for the time that somebody put into this. Now, as far as the headstock, they left that alone. No full size headstock conversions here. But this Melody Maker has a serious vibe to it. Just talking about it, I want to buy it and review it. Let's see, is it still available? Nah, it's not. Somebody paid 2000 or so for it. That's the problem with Reverb's new looks like somebody already grabbed this gear thing. Is You don't know if the seller just took the listing down, if it's sold, if it's sold for how much. So just because you see a crazy price here doesn't necessarily mean it got that. But that's just speaking in general. Honestly, that price isn't that bad for an end user if you like the mods. As it seems like everybody wants about 2500 for these things now. But it wasn't that long ago that 12 to 18 was possible. Perhaps people have finally caught on to those 60s melody makers. Our next two here are devious sellers, where I'm not sure if they know that they're trying to scam people or not. So let's take a look at this one. Gibson Explorer Faded Cherry. Except for uh, well, what has happened to our explorer here? Somebody has poorly chopped that thing. That is called the Clapton Cut. Apparently Eric Clapton bought an Explorer in the olden days thinking, oh, this thing is rare. It's a prototype design, doesn't have the full horn. And then he was really upset to later find out that no, somebody just chopped it up. So Gibson has created custom shop reissues of the Clapton Cut Explorer. So it's iconic in that own right. So sometimes you see people who want to copy that. Sometimes they copy it on an RD like this one. <laughs> So I saw a thousand dollar price tag and they're calling it an Explorer Faded Cherry. So the Faded Series Explorer, if somebody chopped it up like that, okay, thousand bucks, it might be an okay price. So I took a look at it. All right, looks like somebody swapped out our bridge. We've got a metric style one. Sometimes Tome Pros are like that. So don't be too freaked out right away. Strange modification here. They put an amp light in place of the regular toggle switch and they modified that up, swapped out our pickups and stuff. Things are starting to look a little bit strange with our back control plate being a little bit way too wide. Not exactly in the right spot either, but maybe it's just the Clapton cut looking weird. And then, yeah, the headstock. Come on, guy. You know that's not a Gibson. Granted, I'm around Gibsons every day. It's my job to know this stuff. If you've only heard of the brand, you actually haven't seen and felt a real one, I could see how this might trip someone up. But you can tell right there, that's the import style truss rod route. It doesn't have the right style truss rod itself. The headstock's just nowhere near right. Now, the Gibson logo does look pretty good, so it's probably an official decal. But then when you flip it over to the back, it's like, yeah, game over there. Nowhere near right we don't have the correct wings we don't have the right shape that's a no from me however it's got some pretty cool finish checking and it's got some honest wear but then when you look at how the neck is joined to the body it's like no that's not how gibsons are done at all kind of looks similar to that melody maker we were just looking at except for that was very different so unfortunately here's another one that says looks like somebody's already grabbed this gear but that was probably a suspended listing whereas reverb took it down but unfortunately that was being described as a real gibson Next, we have Gibson Les Paul with UE Signature. All right, so this one was 3,500 bucks. It looks like some sort of a custom shop by the case maybe, and some person has signed it. This one was for sale in Hong Kong, Hong Kong, so I wasn't quite familiar with the artist, but looking at it, it's like, okay, that's a cool little signature, little cat guy. Looks like they also did it on the back, but that looks suspiciously printed on. But hey, it's got one of these from 2006. I mean, that looks legit, right? That is official case candy, and that's all you got to go on. I could see how that might trip someone up. But if you've got the keen eye, you can already tell. If you have a handle that big securing into these locations, you know that's not an original Gibson case. The 90 style handles that do look like that, they're, they're, they're way different. However, they never said it's the original Gibson case. It could just be a different case. But if we really zoom in here, you can just tell that's the chips and headstock right there, if you've been around them enough. But if you look at the bridge, this is one of those ones where if that's the only thing you look for, this one has the correct style bridge mounts, so you wouldn't see the metric studs necessarily. Other signs that show us that this is a fake is this right here. Gibson's official one, they go about right here, kind of towards the middle-ish. Not exactly in the middle, but they're definitely not just right there on the edge. You can also tell the toggle securing ring right there is not exactly correct. The knobs aren't perfectly lined up. I mean, there are ways to know that this thing is fake, but the biggest one is right here, that the serial numbers being white. That's just how the fake ones look. 
So if you're buying a guitar and you need my trained eyes to look over something, I do offer private help sessions on my website. You can check them out there. I have various packages, whether you just need me to tell you yes or no, it's fake or real, versus, you know, what kind of specs should I be expecting on this or what kind of model you need. Private help sessions are fun. I like seeing what everybody's buying and getting them a good price. But sadly, this particular listing is still up. I tried reporting it, so hopefully nobody falls for it. But hopefully, hopefully, hopefully this guy's lying and he didn't really pay like $4,000 for it in 2010. But the signature is supposed to be of this person right here. A Japanese singer-songwriter, multi-instrumentalist slash actress. Next up, you guys remember this episode? I said you almost never see this finish. And then like two days after that video, Guitar Chimp comes out with this thing. <laughs> It's a Les Paul custom done up in TV yellow. Now I've got to say, this is one of the ugliest customs I've ever seen. Like there's good TV yellow and there's bad TV yellow. This is the, I just don't think they quite did it right. I think it needs more of an ambered over tint for me to be happy, or maybe it just needs more wood grain, but this did not come out as expected. Or perhaps this thing just needs P90 pickups. I'm still really curious about doing a TV Yellow 54 reissue. In fact, I was talking to Music Zoo, seeing if I could maybe do a custom order of that. Because we had talked about that crazy 355 reissue, so I thought, well, maybe we just scale it back. Because 54 reissues, they already have the mahogany top, so it kind of works. So we'll see what that quote comes back at. But I think why this one looks so strange and different is not just because of the finish. I mean, A, this has a mahogany top when it doesn't normally have that. It also appears to be a one-piece mahogany top, which is very special. Well, kind of special anyways. So it's going to look different from a regular custom because of that. But we also have chrome hardware, which is an interesting choice. Because normally, when we think TV Yellow, we think the juniors or the specials. And they don't have chrome pickup covers. They're normally black plastics. So that's why I think a P90 staple would work well with this. But the other spec that's interesting about this is look, we have a rosewood fretboard. So that tells me this was probably birthed in that 2011, 2014 ish era. And looking at our serial number, yes, indeed it was 2012. Interesting take on the TV yellow finish. Maybe not my favorite, but I am glad it exists and it's out there because this is one quirky beast. But it is available for. 45, I mean, that's not too bad for a quirky custom like that. I mean, trust me, my custom order's gonna be much more than that. Probably like seven, 8,000, so that, that's a deal in comparison. Then speaking of weird things, take a look at this. Les Paul Special from 1999. What is going on with that fretboard? That is fascinating. It's almost like somebody intentionally dyed the side. But no, sometimes wood just has characteristics like that. So half light, half dark. But the reason why I say it could be dyed is it looks like somebody has refinished the top here. So maybe somebody took a little bit of this stain because it is suspiciously about the same color, right? And just did it up on the other half. The photos aren't quite good enough to tell for sure. But this is just a regular 1999 built on the fourth day of the year Les Paul special. Now the special back then just meant like a really stripped down Les Paul studio essentially. Like they were a little bit thinner, but they would be modernized in the fact that they don't have the P90s anymore. They don't have the wrap tails. They've got the full humbuckers and stop bar setup. Oh, and also they would have these little swooped comfort cuts back here. Very nice guitars, not too much money. Maybe not my favorite, but there's a lot of people who love gigging these things. But this thing apparently has a nasty heel crack that's been repaired on it. There's a giant ding in the neck, but this photo also shows us that the mahogany neck has some figuring in it, which is cool. And yeah, somebody swapped out our pickups, electronics, all that good stuff, and refinished the front. It's definitely some sort of a road dog, but at least it's an interesting one at that. Poor thing only lasted eight years before it got busted. But nice JB Jazz combination in the pickups. Those are very nice pickups in there. They're asking $800 shipped. But I think that's going to about wrap it up for tonight. Troglodytes, thank you for watching today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.